sports director, Gary Papa. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. It promises to be a very big season. Some developments this spring. Pitcher Ken Howell was released. Pitcher Kurt Schrilling continues to pitch, even though he has a stress fracture in his leg. And on Tuesday, Darren Dalton signed a big contract. Also, the Phillies' record this spring has been their best since 1986. But let's go back, oh, about two months ago. It was a sunny day in Clearwater, Florida. every spring the beautiful sunshine of Clearwater but something else happens every year this team talks about a possible pennant and the question has to be asked after so many years of futility including last year's last place finish are they contenders or pretenders and to answer that question we start at the very top contenders or pretenders contenders for sure that is the team president, Bill Giles, who is always optimistic this time of year. But as he looks out on his 1993 Phillies model, now more than in recent memory, he sees a winner. I think we're going to be good. I don't want to right. put us on the spot by saying we're going to win it, but we should be good and win over 90 games. 90 games? Now, we've heard this so many times before in the past few years. In the Lee Thomas era, that is the general manager. This is his team built from scratch since 1988. Three last place finishes. Well, I'm sure the fans are frustrated. I'm frustrated. I think Bill Giles is. Everybody is. Uh, the club itself uh, thinks that they can win. They, they like themselves. Uh, I think there's a great attitude here. And yeah, this is a big year for us. A big year, perhaps, but without any big names brought in. It is a constant criticism. But to his credit, Thomas has engineered some deals and some steals. Kurt Schilling from Houston, Wes Chamberlain from the Pirates. He brought in Lenny Dykstra and John Crump, all quality ball players. Little to show for it, but the players know it is really up to them. Ownership went out and showed us that they want to win, and they've given us the people to win. Now they've put the, put the ball in our court. We have to go and perform. Pressure to perform, both on the players, the manager, and the general manager. I think now we finally have the right mix of people. And uh, whether we win this year or not is not going to make a bit of difference with their jobs. Many fans this offseason were saying, if you are serious about contending, go after a David Cohn or maybe a Kirby Puckett or even a, a Barry Bonds. But the Phillies' philosophy was this. Why not get more for your money? Barry Bonds. No way. Kirby Puckett. Sorry. David Cohn. Yeah, right. The Phillies' philosophy this offseason was simple. Get a lot of help. Improve their depth from top to bottom. And that's exactly what they did. Now, they didn't get David Cohn, but they did get Danny Jackson and an old friend in Larry Anderson. More on those guys later on in the show. In the outfield, three new faces. Coming from Kansas City, Jim Eisenreich. More on him later on as well. Over from Houston, powerful Pete Incavilia. He strikes out a lot, but he can hit them a long way. I'm the kind of guy that Jimmy doesn't have to worry about. You know, whatever he wants me to do, I'll do. If I if he wants me to play every day, I'll play every day. If he wants me to platoon, I'll platoon. If he wants me to come off the bench, I'll come off the bench. It really doesn't matter to me as long as we're winning. While Incavilia will pack a punch, mild-mannered Milt Thompson returns after four years with the Cardinals. The knock on him has been his poor hitting against the left-hander, but the Phillies are confident in his skill, especially coming off the bench. I've been coming off the bench and uh, been doing well, and, and I still can do that, but I think I'm going to get a little more playing time here in that head, so one of the reasons I chose to come back. We had it what I consider three veteran outfielders. Uh, something we did not have last season. Uh, I think it makes my job easier. I, you know, there's a possibility of having one of the best benches in the National League. 
coming up, the men who will decide if the Phillies contend or pretend. I'm saving so that we can have a family. We design hand-painted wallpaper, and it's really hard work. But it's very satisfying. I think I got my first passbook when I was about 12. It was babysitting money that I just started putting away. And it turned out to be waitressing money, and then job money, and... <laughs> then my money. <laughs> Your money. <laughs> Marnie and Nori Collins find that banking really is as easy as GSB. Savings means freedom to me. Buy an international business class seat, and that's what you get. So what's the difference? Continental's new business first. With the room and comfort of a true sleeper seat. The luxury of international first class. But at a business class fair. Continental's business first. The business class to Europe that's truly first class. That's the difference. The shopping center, 9 out of 10 people use. The genuine Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. 9 out of 10 use it. No other book can match it. A ballot line becomes. Chi Chi's knows you love chicken. So we stuffed it into an enchilada. Rolled it into a taquito. And grilled it Tex Mex style. Chi Chi's Chicken Trio Olay, just $7.99. And right now, the same low price includes our delicious Sopapillas dessert. What a sweet deal. Chi Chi Olay! A celebration of food. There are two guys that must regain their all-star form if this team is to contend rather than pretend. John Cruck and Lenny Dykstra. Here's Tug McGraw. This time last year, Lenny Dykstra was trying to put his off-season behind him, the one that almost saw him lose his life in this accident. This spring, another off-season to forget, one that saw Lenny lose at the table, about $50,000 in one night, says Philadelphia Magazine. But Lenny's mum on his money says it's his business. But what he will talk about is his thirst to win, to be a contender. It's the best, uh, really, core that we've had uh, as a group, and, uh, you know, the timing's right. The division is pretty much wide open, and uh, we got a lot of hungry players here. Uh, uh, no one more hungrier than me. The last two years, Dykstra has pleased us and teased us with his hustle and his back, but he's never been as good as he thinks he can be. So how about a batting title in 1993? I came close to 1990, and uh, with a little bit more experience, I think I would have done it that year, but... Uh, I think everything's uh, building up to a real positive year for me. Also last year, John Cruck was in hot pursuit of the batting title, but because of a sore shoulder, finished third. Maybe at the vet this summer, we'll have two Phillies in pursuit of the National League batting title. Two things John Cruck is known for. His bat Ow. and his belly. So much so, he's even in a TV commercial with the twins Chuck Knobloch. Knobloch is big on nutrition. Cruck is not. All the wisecracks about his weight used to be a sore spot, but not anymore. This winter, I finally realized that we had a boring team. We weren't any good last year, and, and they needed something to write about, so, you know, that, whatever. If it fills up the paper, that's fine. If you all want to talk about it, you talk about it. At age 32, the time is now for John Cruck. Like Dykstra, injuries have been a problem. Shoulder surgery in the offseason and knee problems this spring. But for both Cruck and Dykstra, the beauty of 93 is knowing that they alone don't have to carry this team. Thank you, Todd. Now, you can count on Dykstra and Cruck, no doubt, getting a lot of help from this guy. All-star Darren Dalton, who this week became the highest-paid catcher in baseball. For Darren Dalton, life is a day at the beach. It has been this way since his first spring training. Coming from Kansas, you know, I, I had no idea. I've never, I'd only seen the ocean once. That was in Texas. And, you know, that's 
It's a lot prettier than there, so I liked it. I, I always wanted to live here once I came down here. And he has. And one of the reasons he has stayed a Philly is to stay here during the off-season and right through spring training. People always ask me, uh, what are you going to do during the off-season? You guys going to take a trip somewhere or go on a vacation? I said, I can't wait to get home. This is paradise down here. The National League's RBI King knows he's leading a charmed life. He and his wife, Lynn, have a two-year-old named Zach, and they both have high-profile careers. She has a, a Hooters Night Out Theater that she hosts, which is a TV show that comes on every Saturday, and uh, it's down here. Hey, Lynn, what you doing? Starting for my driver's test. Ooh, somebody been a bad girl again? Hey, if they don't want me to do those speeds, they shouldn't make cars that go that fast. Like, like Darren, Lynn's hard. career has been on a fast track. As a so spokesperson for a popular restaurant chain, her picture is everywhere from center field to a center fold in Playboy. Darren remembers being in the Phil's clubhouse and seeing the layout. There was a stack of magazines there, and, and I opened one up, and it, it was a Playboy, and it just happened. I was looking at my wife, and I was like, wow, these guys are looking at my wife, you know? And that, and I stuck it under my shirt, took it <laughs> to my locker, and, and that was the first experience I had with it. But that, that's, uh, you know, I'm beyond that now. Darren has also had to get past a knee injury that could have ended his career. Now he is arguably the best catcher in baseball. I know what it's like to, to have the world by the tail, and then all of a sudden it's taken away from you. And now you've got to make the move to, to get that back. I try to go out, do my job, try to have fun, number one, and get the most out of life that I can. And right now, life for Darren Dalton is paradise. The bat of Darren Dalton, obviously a big key for 93. Another duty for Darren, of course, is handling that pitching staff. And Tug McGraw says that staff is ready for this year because they are armed and dangerous. Last year, you could have set up a revolving door into the local hospital and run pitchers through it all year long from the Phillies staff. This year, 1993, it's a whole new ball game. They have the potential for five healthy new starters, a bullpen that has long men, set-up men, and stoppers, all looking pretty healthy, and probably more important than anything else, the entire staff is experienced. Dangerous. Well, I, I kind of like our pitching staff, our starters. And there's a lot there to like. Terry Mulholland, the staff ace. Kurt Schilling. Fresh off 14 wins in 1992. Last year's behind me, and, and to get to keep the image of, of a, one of the best stars in the National League, you have to be consistent. So I've got to go out, and I've got to do the same thing I did last year over the course of the entire season. Got him. Tommy Green, arm problems last year, out for three months. But because of that, he thinks he's now a better pitcher. And say hello to Danny Jackson, brought over in a trade from the Florida Marlins. Once a solid starter, won 23 games in 1988, but durability is a question. I just want to help out this team the best that I can and, and do the things I'm capable of doing with this ball club. And don't forget Big Ben Rivera. Dangerous. When you got that bunch of starters and you got that luxury, you know, and all of a sudden maybe one guy doesn't make it as a starter, you got him to, to be in your bullpen for a couple and he used to hold you close till you get to a Mitch Williams. But before you get to Mitch, a new man in the middle. Larry Anderson is back and almost 40. And to close the door, it's the wild thing, Mitch Williams. I'm one of these terminal optimists that comes in and you just, you come in with a hope to win and I hope that everybody stays healthy so that we can compete. And if we do that, there's, I don't see any way in the world how we can't compete. Thank you, Tug McGraw. We'll be back with the 93 Phillies contenders or pretenders right after this. Homemade gravy isn't a sure thing. Neither is store-bought. But Heinz Homestyle Gravy is so close to homemade, it's guaranteed. We start with lean beef to make Heinz 98% fat-free. Then we simmer and stir it till it's just like homemade. For your money back. There's store-bought, there's homemade, and there's the sure thing. Heinz Homestyle Gravy. Homemade taste guaranteed. 
Repeating to it hit, and, and I forgot to play her number. Seven. Oh, she's, she's home. She's going to kill me. I got to hide. Here. Go there. Hi. Oh, gosh, here she comes. I'm home. The closet. Yeah. Thanks, boy. Where are you? Darn it. The Pennsylvania Lottery's daily number. Don't forget to play every day. Did you remember? Bill. I knew you'd forget. We won? What do you mean, we? Sherry, baby. When you move into a new house, little things are going to come up. Unexpected things. Things the previous owner forgot to mention. So to make your new house a home, turn to the book with more choices. It can even help if you want to get out of the house for a while. Red, yellow, and Bella, Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. Nine out of ten use it. No other book can match it. A Bella Panty Company. cam engine and four-wheel double wishbone suspension, consider it a Formula One car. For the masses, the 1993 Acura Integra. Welcome back to the 1993 Phillies, contenders or pretenders. This baseball offseason has brought up a very serious question. It all started off with Cincinnati Reds owner Marge Schott. And the issue is this. How far has baseball come? I hope it doesn't change me. Um, I'll see, though, because I haven't been through it yet. You know, we'll see. Marge Schott kicked out of baseball for one year. Marge Schott has three and a half weeks before she must turn over the day-to-day -day control of the Cincinnati Reds. But the type of language commonly used by Mrs. Schott is offensive and unacceptable. Alcohol, slam ball, and rhythm, and all we got. With the topic of minorities in baseball once again in the headlines, we decided to take a look inside the Phillies organization from top to bottom and see just how they've addressed the biggest issue now facing America's favorite pastime. As far as the black situation and, and Latins, uh, we can do better. Part of correcting a problem is knowing that you have one. And to their credit, Phillies management has not stuck its head in the sand on this one. In the front office, the Phillies have 70 employees, 28 women, six African Americans, one Hispanic, and no Asians. On the field level, among 27 coaching and managerial positions, on the minor and major league level, six are minorities. Phillies first base coach Mel Roberts says part of the problem is some minority candidates don't want to pay the price. We wanted to start in double A AA and triple A and go on right back into the minor, uh, to the big leagues. So if we're really going to get solid, we're going to have to start at the lower level, and some of us are going to have to work our way all the way through. And what about the players on the field and in the clubhouse? We get along well with all, all of our teammates, you know, there's no, no race in here. It's 18% of Afro-Americans in baseball, and uh, back then it used to be probably 1 or 2%. So all I can say is that it's getting better, and with time it has gotten better. Yes, it has gotten better. In the offseason, Tony Perez became manager of the Cincinnati Reds. Don Baylor will be the new skipper of the expansion Colorado Rockies, bringing the total to six minority managers out of 28 in the big leagues. But should it take an issue, like Marge Schott's statements, to press baseball into action? I think it probably, in the long run, will be helpful uh, to the industry, baseball industry, and to uh, a lot of people, because it called attention to a problem that certainly is there and has to be addressed. When the Pirates lost in seven games to the Braves last year, it may have meant the end of the Pittsburgh dominance in the National League. This offseason saw them lose several key players, and all of a sudden, the division is up for grabs. With more, here's Phil Andrews. Pittsburgh lost Barry Bonds, Bobby Bonilla, and Doug Brabeck to free agency. Traded Jose Lane and John Smiley. So how did the Pirates defend their divisional title this year? You always worry about what you have, not what you don't have. And you don't have any control over the other team. That's why everybody keeps talking about, well, who do you expect in the division to be tough? Well, I can't really worry about that. With Bob Tewksbury, the ace of the pitching staff, and hard-hitting Greg Jeffries now in the lineup, this could be an interesting year for Cards manager Joe Torre. 
The Cubs dugout should be a friendlier place this season, thanks to the much-needed addition of some depth. So we went out and got Willie Wilson, of course, and Kenny Maldonado, and Steve Bouchel's healthy, and, and uh, added to our, our pitching staff with Guzman and Hibbert, and we got a closer now with uh, uh, Randy Myers. Last year, Montreal exposed themselves as contenders. This year, they hope to become the second Canadian team to play in a World Series. If Brett Saberhagen rebounds from tendonitis problems, the Mets could have a deadly pitching rotation. And a trim down Bobby Bonilla certainly can't hurt. The Marlins may be the new kids on the block, but with 45-year-old Charlie Huff and all-star catcher Benito Santiago in the lineup, the men of Teal certainly aren't lacking experience. <laughs> I'm enjoying it, you know, I'm enjoying my time. I'm having a great time with those new guys here, and especially with the coaching staff and, and everybody. And so there you have it. A quick look at the Phillies competition in this year's race for the National League East title. And with that in mind, here's a quick look at my predictions for the upcoming season. As a whole, the division a little weak, but the Expos might have the right stuff. The Mets and Phillies need healthy pitching staffs, and the Cards, Pirates, and Cubs could make things certainly interesting, while the Marlins mature in Miami. And don't go away. There's more of the 1993 Phillies, contenders or pretenders, right after this. Burt sells balloons. Bob sells balloons. Burt sells wacky gifts. Bob sells wacky gifts. Burt delivers. Bob delivers. So if Bob's got everything Burt's got, why Burt busy and Bob not? Now, do you suppose brett has got a big color ad in the book nine out of ten people use. The genuine bell of Pennsylvania yellow pages. Nine out of ten use it. No other book can match it. A ballot might be coming. There was a deposit made for our wedding there in 83. So, I mean, I had certain deposits, remember? Mm -hmm. How we used to put them in. And I said, this is for the wedding, this is for college. And we put four children through school. Two girls and two boys. And they're all good parents. It's great to know that I had it to give. The Clarks have found that banking really is as easy as GSB. I mean, I, I wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> Buy an international business class seat, and that's what you get. So what's the difference? Continental's new business first. With the room and comfort of a true sleeper seat. A luxury of international first class, but at a business class fair. Continental's business first. The business class to Europe that's truly first class. That's the difference. Nostradamus predicted that this would happen just once before the millennium. The Hackinger two-day sale. Take an extra 10% off everything in the store. Just like the 17-year locust, only not as often. Saturday and Sunday, take an extra 10% off all lumber, all building supplies, all kitchen and bath products, all plants, all doors and windows, all lawn and garden supplies, 10% off all everything. The last time they had one of these, I had hair on my head. The Hackinger two-day sale, Saturday and Sunday. It doesn't happen often. It has been a spring training full of stories, but there's one more story to tell. It's about a player who overcame some long odds, even being in the position to ask the question, to contend or pretend. When most major leaguers think back, they remember being the star of their Little League team. But for Jim Eisenreich, memories are of a five-year-old whose body ticks, blinking, and unexplained noises made him different than everyone else. At that time, we didn't know what it was because these things I've been doing all this, all my childhood uh, weren't really known about. And uh, since I got along well in society and you know, with my family and everything, I could play ball, you know, I could do schoolwork, I could do whatever I had to do, and I could do it okay. Um, people didn't think it was, there was anything wrong. While the ticks subsided somewhat in high school, they came back stronger than ever during Eisenreich's rookie year in the majors. What I would do is I would almost hold my breath. I would start hyperventilating. And that just, that was like, that's a scary feeling when you start hyperventilating, you know, you're losing control. And I thought, well, I'm going to pass out and I'm going to lay here on the field and then they're going to hit the ball out here and I ain't going to catch it. You know, and I thought, well, I better get off unless someone in here that can do the job. The Minnesota Twins thought he had stage fright until he was diagnosed with Tourette syndrome, a genetic condition caused by a chemical imbalance in the brain. Eisenreich missed parts of four different seasons, but now with medication and the proper diet, he says it doesn't affect him on the field. 
When I left, I was hitting 300, 310. And if it, if it affected me at all, I would like to know what I could actually do. I mean, could I hit 350 or 370 or whatever, but uh, it wasn't affecting my game at all. Jim Eisenreich does not expect any special treatment from Phillies fans. He says, just treat him like everybody else. Every player has problems, you know, and just some are more noticeable than others. I mean, mine is very noticeable, and it's just something that I've learned to deal with, and I'm doing fine now. Eisenreich comes around the score. Thank you, Scott Palmer. As we all know, recently we've had our share of snow. And this year, more than ever, it was truly our winter of discontent. But now, the winter wind stops, and the snow magically melts into spring. It happens every year, springtime and baseball. And this year, we need it more than ever. And who knows, maybe this spring will turn into a super summer, then a fabulous fall, and then, then who knows? Those are the dreams of this game, the dreams of the Phillies. Contenders or pretenders? That is the question. Have a good season, everybody. Good night. The 1993 Phillies, contenders or pretenders, was brought to you by Bella Pennsylvania.